Okay, we are back, Brother Jim at Don'tPerish.com with Brother Drake and Brother Jonathan. We're in part four of Characteristics of the Biblical New Testament Body. Check out Don'tPerish.com, lots of articles at our teaching blog that will help you see the difference between Sunday man-made religion and this true New Testament body of Christ that God has ordained. We're on point number 17. Uh-oh, this is a big one. Of all of the topics that we <laughs> deal with with people... Women covering their heads. This is one of the most controversial. Brother Drake, could you read the infamous yes. head covering verse for us, please? All right, First Timothy two nine. Nope, some, number seventeen. Oh, whoops. Yep, we're on number Wrong seventeen. One. First Corinthians eleven five through six. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to shorn or shave and let her head be covered. Amen. So, again, we'll be doing a whole roundtable on this because this topic comes up more often than any other topic that I can think of, believe it or not. And it is a biblical teaching for women to cover their heads with a cloth veil. It was taught in the so-called body of Christ for 1,900 years because it clearly is taught in 1 Corinthians 11. Paul taught it. The teachers or teachers after him believed what he said mm -hmm. and people today have perverted it ever since feminism came along mm -hmm. women took off their head coverings and women put on their makeup and their pants and their tight clothes about 100 150 years ago it really started to devolve be yeah. perverted and today we see in the culture in so-called christian women they're using their hair as a sexual tool oh, yeah. they're showing themselves off they're dressing like harlots and mm -hmm. the Bible does not call for his godly people to do that. So dress Amen. is very important. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Very true. And so we'll cover that on other Indeed. topics. But head covering, you can look up the articles at our teaching blog. Head coverings for women. It is to, for today. And we teach about all the arguments people have. And we refute them. And we'll do more on that coming up. Amen. Amen. Um, number 18, women biblically <laughs> dressed. We're on the women's role here. Um and it's also women and men biblically dressed. I corrected this because I needed to correct it, that women and men should be dressing biblically. Brother John, would you read the verses under number 18? It's 1 Timothy 2.9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shame, with, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not, to, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or mm -hmm. costly array. Amen. Yeah. 1 Peter 3, 3 through 4. Whose adorning let it not be outward adorning of plaiting of the hair and wearing of gold or putting on of apparel but let it be hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible even the ornament of meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of god a great price a great price amen so amen. going going along with head coverings our body is the temple of god we're taught that in um various books like first corinthians amen. And so the body is to be correctly covered and clothed. And the Bible teaches us the body is not something to be shown off if you're of God. The body is not something to be adorned, to be looked at. Um, the body is to be covered. Our clothes are a sin covering. And this has been lost in man-made religion. In fact, when you look at their websites, they often say, we don't care what you wear. <laughs> and I always think that's ironic because... So what can women and men come dressed in that they wouldn't think is improper? They just see dollar signs. What's that, Brother John? They, they just see dollar signs. Yes. And, and so, yep, it's about numbers. It's about dollar signs. So we teach what God's Word says. And again, we'll do a roundtable on it. We've got articles on that on our website. But in First Timothy 2, when it says modest apparel, look up the Greek word. That actually means a long and flowing robe. So women are to wear robes or a long dress to cover their forms. And men, you're not left out of this. We have an article on our website on the teaching blog called Dress for Christian Men. We should be the example. We should also be covering our forms. That's what God did in the garden with Adam and Eve. He covered their forms with a robe. So men should be wearing long, baggy, loose, unadorned clothing to be the example for our wives and for our women and for the culture. So... This has yeah. been lost in man-made religion. If you go there to witness, you have to hide your eyes because they dress like harlots. Yeah, it is. And that is the sign of a harlot's heart. How can a person have a new, regenerated heart in Christ 
if they have a harlot's heart. That's like having the thief of a, the heart of a thief or the heart of a murderer and claiming you're born of Christ. That cannot be. That cannot be. Yeah, so maybe. that's an important topic that we're going to cover in more detail at other roundtables coming up. Amen. Number 19, women in submission, men leading their homes. Brother Drake, would you read those verses for us? Yes, Ephesians 5.22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Colossians 3.18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband <coughs> as it is fit in the Lord. Amen. Feminist alert here. Feminist yeah, alert. Feminist alert, amen. How often do we go out witnessing and see the women leading, mm -hmm. see the men standing there as the women try to refute us? How many times do you see a man interested in talking about the things of God and his wife's dragging him back? Honey, let's go. we got to go shopping. So women in submission, men leading their homes. I think you guys would agree with me. You're much younger than I am. But this culture, the men have become very feminized. Would you agree? Yeah. Yes, yes. Right. <clears throat> what are some examples of where we see the men feminized beyond what I just said? They probably spend more time doing their hair than women do. <laughs> that could yep. be very true, yep. Brother John. That's pretty sad. That's vanity. That's vain. Yeah, well, just a failure failure for men to, to, to make biblical decisions in the household because because they allow their wives. Their wives aren't going to like it. And, and I mean, that's one I can think of. But Yeah. Yep. I think of the Garden of Eden where Satan went through Eve, deceived mankind, fell into sin through Eve. Paul talks about it in the in 1 Corinthians that Satan deceived Eve, or in the New Testament he talks about it in several places. Um, and so we need to be very careful. Feminism is of Satan. It's a tool to destroy the family of God, to destroy God's authority, yet people, sm uh, sm people smirk at it today um, through lady pastors, through wives leading their husbands around, through letting there be um, elders that are women. All yep. of this, and we'll cover that in some other points here, the next one, um, that's not of God. No. The men are to lead, and God has a wonderful role for women. We don't bash women. We don't hold women down. Jesus lifted up women, but their authority is not in the home leading their husbands or in the body of Christ being teachers or leaders. They're to find their role within the body of Christ like we all must do. Amen. So feminization Amen. is a big problem in man-made religion, but it's not so in the true New Testament body of Christ. Um, we know different from scripture so we flee from that type of activity um, number 20 women silent in the gathering no women leaders or pastors brother john would you read those two verses for us first corinthians fourteen thirty four. let your women keep silent in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak but they are commanded to be under obedience as saith the law and uh, 1 Timothy 2, 11 through 12, Let women learn in silence with, with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to upsert authority over a man, but to be in silence. Okay, so help me. How much clearer can it get than that from Apostle Paul? It's very, very, very clear and, yeah, very, very heavily disregarded, as you can see. I mean, people... How do we have lady pastors today? Yeah. <laughs> lady elders. Yeah, he says he says very, very, very clearly. Yeah, it's not biblical. It's yeah, not and biblical. it's a sign, again, of feminism, as we talked about in the other point. Amen. Feminism has crept in. The women are influencing. It's an insult. It is an it's insult. It's an insult to everything that was instituted. Yep, yeah, it is. Yeah. And what you'll find in man-made Sunday church, I've read surveys where they say 70 to 80% of the people that are most active are the women. So the women are on all their boards. Yep. The women are being influenced how big the building's going to be, what the design of the building's going to be, the flowers up front, the carpeting, the coffee bar. The women are all coffee influencing bar, this yeah. as the men. Like those things even belong in the house. Amen. Yeah. While the men are out hunting and watching football, they're letting the women run the show, which is, yeah. again, like Brother John said, that's an insult to God because that's not what God has ordained. So we'll be covering more of that because yeah. feminism is another topic we run into a lot. And we don't hate women at all. We lift up women God has a wonderful role for women. My wife's sister, Debbie, is an awesome woman of God, but she understands her role, and that's glorifying to God. She's not trying to usurp that. Amen. No. And they show their love and obedience. Amen. They show their love and obedience. They show their love and obedience to God's Word as we men do that. Yep. So let's be an example to that. Um, okay. Number 21. Okay, this is a big yeah. one to me, and I'll explain why. No tithe, okay, 
in the New Testament body of Christ. Brother Drake, would you read 1 Corinthians 9, verse 7? Yep. So, no tithe. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So the, the point here is, if you go to our teaching blog and look up an article, or my article on tithing, the tithe was for Israel. It was in Israel. It was through the temple system. The tithe was given to priests, yep. and the Jews were the ones giving the tithe, and the tithe was not money. It was food and supplies. <laughs> food, yeah. supplies. It was bags of groceries, their harvest. Yeah. But yet, modern pastors have convinced people, you got to keep giving us your money to what? What are they promoting? Sick A building-centered name. system that Jesus has destroyed. He took the temple down. Okay, yep. and made us the temple of God. We are the temples now. Yep. So meeting in houses. So Makes brother, jo- yep. Brother John always says that the man-made places are all about money, and this proves it because they're unbiblically teaching the tithe when it should be um, you work and you give out of what God tells you to give out of the abundance of your own heart for something, someone needy. No longer anyone telling you what you have to give is yeah. pretty clear in Scripture. So money is not the focus. If we meet in our houses. We don't need to be raising money for parking lots, buildings, lights, widescreen TVs, and salaries. What we need to do is be working and have some money to help needy saints, widows, orphans, help the gospel go out. That's what the money of God goes out for, not for these buildings and systems of Satan that yes. are deceiving people yeah. on Sundays. Amen. 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 Yeah, not only just buildings, but buildings that house house false false teachings, yeah. false teachers that don't teach a biblical don't teach a biblical gospel in the first place. Amen. Amen. They call the buildings the church when yep. clearly the body of Christ is our his believers. We're living stones, not building brick and mortar. So mm-hmm. it's more Amen. sin, it's more unbiblical ways that are going out there. Amen. Um we're moving on to point twenty two, meeting house to house and one another ring. Brother John, if you could read that verse for us. Acts two forty six, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Amen. Okay, this is a famous verse, and I always use this on modern pastors. They go to Acts and they say, well, they met on the first day of the week, which was Sunday, and the Bible does say that in a couple of instances they met on Sunday, but it's not the Lord's day. Sunday is not the Lord's day, but they forget to read. That it says they met daily, house to house, breaking bread. So the New Testament um, teaches clearly that they were meeting house to house and breaking bread, but they were not doing what is done today on Sunday. Okay, I'll read the last two here. I got the last two on point 23, if that's what you guys are saying. Yeah, I'll read the last two. Um, So what we're talking about here is meeting house to house. It's not necessarily has to be every day, but it's a fluid, flowing thing of the Spirit of God. It's not on Sunday. It's not something that ritualistic. Um, They call Sunday the Lord's Day, and they need to build special buildings. They call it the house of God. No, the house of God are the people of God. They live their life every day. Amen. It it wasn't just once a week. Amen. Forget about them. Amen. Yeah, Yeah, striving to be holy. Yeah. Striving for holiness. Spiritual harlotry. Spiritual Spiritual harlotry. And we'll do some, we'll do a round table on the Sabbath. We'll do a round table on the Sabbath, but the Sabbath has been replaced with resting in Christ. And so we no longer keep one day and they make Sunday that one day. So, the, the New Testament body of Christ cl- clearly was fluid, spirit-led, meeting house to house. Now they'll say, well, they met at the temple. Well, that was the temple that God built, okay? <laughs> yeah. That was the temple that God instructed to be built. That's gone now. We don't have that. And now the temple that God instructs us to be in is our bodies. And then we meet as the body of Christ, Amen. not in a building anymore. So they've corrupted that system, and they've made it about brick and mortar, and they've made it about Sunday, the Lord's Day. Sunday is not the Lord's Day. We have an article on that in our teaching blog. We'll be doing more teaching on that. Another corruption, another perversion of man-made religion. And we are almost at the end of our part here. I think we're at part four. We'll be back with, I believe it is part five, to finish up on the characteristics of the biblical New Testament body. So stay tuned. Praise God. Amen.